Okay. Am I edible? Yes, you are. Okay. okay, let's get started. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, Ibu dan Bapak. Welcome to English Webinar World Teachers Day edition How to Promote English Language Learners, WTC or Willingness to Communicate in the Classroom. My name is Beni Arum and I'm going to be the moderator today. Well, as we know, in 1994, UNESCO declared 5th October to be World Teachers Day in honor of significant step made for teacher on 5th October 1966. And so our session today is really, really special as celebrating the World Teachers Day 2022. For today, uh, we have two fabulous speakers. They are Bu Anakim and Bu Ismi Fajarsi. I do believe that most of participants here are familiar with those amazing women, right? So welcome to Bu Anakim and Bu Ismi Fajarsi and the one and only Bu Intan from Class Creative Indonesia. Have you been here, everyone? Ibu-ibu, we are close powers. Okay. Well, this session will be until 5 p.m. So it will be an hour and a half. But before we continue to our discussion topic, I would like to inform you for all of Bapak Ibu here, let us know when the speakers start to talk, please mute your audios. And some of you who have any question, please drop your question in the chat box or you can raise your hand and I will let you to ask. Well, Ibu Baba, to start our discussion, firstly, Let's have Bu Intan to introduce Kelas Kreatif Indonesia. Hello, Bu Intan. Hello, Bu Benny. Okay. Hello, Bapak Ibu. Hello, Une. <laughs> I try to learn how to pronounce your name. <laughs> Une Kim. <laughs> hello, Une. Nice okay. <laughs> and hello, Ibu Yusmi. Okay, nice to see you, uh, Bapak dan Ibu, for today's and uh, especially today we uh, the webinar is um, special, yeah, for celebrating World Teachers Day uh, edition. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, congratulations for all teachers in the world. Yeah, uh, thank you very much, Bapak, uh, Bu Beni and Bapak dan Ibu. <clears throat> now I'm here as the representative of Class Creative Indonesia, and I'm going to share the screen, ya, Bapak dan Ibu. <clears throat> okay. Amazing teachers here. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much for uh, allow me to give the elicitation related with the uh, class creative uh, Indonesia, especially for English club. So what is that? Um, as we already know, actually, Bapak dan Ibu, and it is taken from Schoology, uh, Personal Learning Network and uh, Benefits Tools, yeah, <clears throat> and tactics. As we already know, also, class creative as a personal learning network. And it can be said that a personal learning network or PLN is a group of colleagues nah, like us, yeah, mentors and professionals that connect with to uh, enhance your learning and uh, take charge of your on professional development. And it's also global, Bapak dan Ibu. If we talk about that, and we get closer to the English, the Plus Creative Indonesia. And here, as already known also by Bapak dan Ibu, and we, we can get contact with uh, all teachers, lecturers, tutors, university students, and MOE staff. So nice, hello everyone here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with the English club, uh, Class Creative Indonesia. So the first one, um, we got the opportunities to directly improve teaching and learning and build uh, networking, as you uh, already know, regarding with the search, writing project, opportunities to lead workshop, professional connection, and etc. And also keep updated with the new research, emerging technology tools for teaching, and then reflect on the ideas, develop lifelong learning. Okay, like uh, today, we are going to 
uh, get um, several knowledge <laughs> or a bunch of knowledge from our uh, presenters. Yeah. And also, uh, what do we do in PLN, Bapak dan Ibu, are great teachers. Collaboration, the first one. And the second one, we are going to share the ideas, resources, and learning materials with other educators. As you can see, uh, several pamphlet, uh, okay, that already shown in the slide. And the last but not least, from Peter Sinch, that sharing knowledge is not about giving people something or getting something from them that is only valid for information sharing. Sharing knowledge is when people are genuinely interested in helping one another to develop new capacities for action. It is about creating learning process. So thank you, Bapak dan Ibu. Good luck and enjoy for uh, get mission for today webinar. Bye. Thank you, Bu Beni. <laughs> I'm giving back to Bu Beni. Okay. Thank you, Bu Intan. Okay. So that's the uh, short introduction for Kelas Kreatif Indonesia. Maybe everyone who want to join Kelas Kreatif Indonesia, firstly, can uh, follow the Instagram first, and then maybe uh, Pak Dadan can add to the WhatsApp group or something. Okay, so everyone, for the first session, we will have uh, the session will be delivered by Bu Unikim. Anjang asyo uni. Okay, so uh, before you start your presentation, I would like to uh, read the, your CV first. Unai Kim received a, a Master in Applied Linguistics from the University of Massachusetts, Boston. She has taught IP MYP English Language Acquisition and IP Korean A. Now, she's supporting primary multilanguage learners at Bandung Independent School. She also has taught English to students from various backgrounds in South Korea and Indonesia. She is also passionate about helping teachers and students create an equitable environment for all. She recently won an Action Research Award from ERJOS regarding promoting a willingness to communicate among middle school English learners. Okay, everyone, we can um, learn many things from her because uh, her recently Action Research Award is really, really suitable to our session theme for today. Bu'une, you will have around 15 until 20 minutes for delivering your the time is yours. Okay, selamat sore Bapak-Bapak, Ibu-Ibu. Selamat sore. <laughs> Nama saya Une Kim. I'm originally from South Korea. And um, yeah, I hope you are having a great day today. I'm, I'm honored to share something that I'm passionate about with you all, especially with amazing teachers from Class Creative Indonesia. I, am, I was touched um, when I heard about this community. This is amazing. <laughs> and I, yeah, like um, you heard, I recently finished the researching on how to promote students' uh, willingness to communicate. And it was published yesterday. <laughs> so. If you want to read more about it, I will share the link on WhatsApp uh, group. So most of my sharing today will be based on the findings from the research. Um, but this is not a time that I share a bunch of strategies, but this is a time that we get to brainstorm ideas and share insights so that we can all support our lo lovely students. So if you have any questions, please share them at the end of the session. Take notes of new ideas and share them with us. Okay, let me share my um, presentation first. Okay. All right, so my first question before we start, I'm curious about why you are here. I know um, what brings you here? Can you see my presentation now? Yes. Okay. I'm sure many of you are from various backgrounds. Please write one reason why you're here. And 
your teaching contacts in the chat window now. For example, I'm here to spend time with my fabulous fellow teachers slash Bandung Independent School, este, like that. Yeah, you can just um, share that. Yes, amazing. Yeah, you can just start texting while I'm sharing. Okay. I'll just have my chat window open so that. Mm. Wow. Amazing, Fatima. We can share a lot. Um, okay. Very good. Yeah, inspiration, curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Very good. Yeah, maybe some of you really want to uh, practice your English or, yeah, your listening skill. That's very good. Okay, let me share my objectives uh, to identify common challenges with multilingual learners and discuss suggestions and to understand the nature of uh, willingness to communicate and discover practical implications of teaching. Mm. To brainstorm what we can do as teachers in supporting multilingual learners to share resources that are beneficial to teachers and learners. Amazing to see all these wonderful people. I can, yeah, I can see you're, you're very curious about um, teaching English. You can see that. All right, so uh, what is WTC, willingness to communicate? I will not go too far, <laughs> um, share all the literature review here, but I will just, um, yeah, share briefly about what it means. Okay, um, I think when I first came to Indonesia, I was actually surprised uh, that many of you can speak pretty good English. I was wondering about it. Oh, how come Indonesians, young people can speak really good English? Because you are all multilinguals already, multilingual learners, right? You can speak Javanese, Indonesian, you can speak Sundanese. I don't know, like your local language. So it's very natural for you to learn a new language, seems like. So uh, maybe, maybe you are wondering why I'm using multilingual learners. Uh, some say multilingual learners or English language learners. These days, a lot of people or teachers use multilingual learners because yeah, the most students who are learning the uh, English language, they are multilingual learners. Yeah, they can speak uh, various languages. So uh, let me introduce the idea called willingness to communicate mm, in second language acquisition. This idea is fundamental because WTC has a significant, significant impact on language learning. Uh, McIntyre is an important name. McIntyre and his colleagues found out that the greater anxiety and the lower the perceived competence the less likely the person is to communicate. It's important to see this lower perceived competence, right? People who perceive themselves to lack the necessary skills in the target language and who experience fear and anxiety about using it tend to avoid speaking in the second language. Isn't it interesting that it is not about their objective language level, but it is about their perceived language level you compare your language with somebody. Yeah, if you're in a room with a bunch of people, if you feel like, oh, I speak better English than them, then you will, you will speak. But if you feel like you're the only one among the native speakers, you feel like, oh, I don't feel like I can speak English at all, right? So it's, in, it's, it's very interesting. It's about your perceived level of English. Um, and in such circumstances, a vicious cycle may develop. Can you guess? For example, our students with higher anxiety, yeah, yeah, like higher anxiety um, and lower perceived competence, they will always think that oh, bahasa Inggris saya tidak bagus, yeah. They will likely be less willing to communicate when they avoid communication they will have fewer opportunities to improve their proficiency. Their anxiety level will stay high if they're high, if their ability does not improve. 
This implies that if teachers focused on increasing students' perceived competence and lowering their anxiety with ample comprehensible input, students' willingness to communicate can increase. Yeah, that's very, so just remember this. Two things, lowering the anxiety and what was it? Increasing students' perceived competence, right? Biar mereka merasa saya bisa gitu ya. So imagine that you are in South Korea now. <laughs> Gratis lo. Sorry, I'll go this way first. Gratis. Yeah, and you came to my class to learn Korean. I'm your teacher. Um, and you can call me Sanseinim, which means teacher. <laughs> Yay. I'll teach you four words, four, oh, three words. Actually, four words. I don't know why. Um, and you will read a short text and answer my question. Okay. I'm sure all of you can answer my question. Are you ready? So you can repeat after me as I introduce these words. Any volunteers who want to read this short text? Okay, let's read it first. Kashi means duty. Kashi. Durian. <laughs> Durian, that's the same. <laughs> Bye. Fruit. Bye. And there's one word. Yure. Origin. Yure. Okay. Any volunteers uh, who wants to read the text? I think there's so many like people these days who are good at Korean. <laughs> Somebody's trying. Oh. Okay, I'll read it and I'll I'll ask you a question. 과일의 왕이라 불리는 두리안은 과일 표면에 있는 가시라는 뜻의 인도네시아어 두리에서 유래되었다. So my question is <laughs> 두리안의 이름은 어느 나라 말에서 따온 것일까요? <laughs> I'll, I'll, text, I'll share my Korean text with you. You can use Google Translate. <laughs> okay. Right. Mulayo. Mulayo. Mulayo ni. <laughs> All right. It seems like it's a bit challenging, right? So how do you feel if you're in a class like this? How do you feel? You can you can share your feelings. <laughs> you can share your feelings in the chat window. Excited. Wow. Somebody's excited. Lost. Anxiety. Right. Exactly. Confused, right? Nervous, anxious. If I just ask Nina, can you answer this question <laughs> in Korean? <laughs> like if I call your name, how would you feel? Gah, don't ask me that question, right? Crying, <laughs> right? Somebody's gonna cry, ah, don't ask me, right? So why do you think you feel like this? Why? Why did you feel like that? Anxious, no motivation. Yeah, somebody's going to run away. <laughs> Don't understand why. Why do you think you felt like that? Actually, no idea. <laughs> That's my question was in English, <laughs> right? Uh, many of our students are feeling like this in class, right? They may already know some of the content we teach in class, but since they do not have enough vocabulary to understand, maybe they don't have, right? And the level of teaching is too much. Maybe some of your students just know like the how to spell words, how to um, maybe a little bit of phonics, but then you like give them a text that they don't understand. They'll feel like, oh, I don't understand what you're talking about, right? Depending on students, some students would want to know everything about the content, check all the vocabulary and study hard. Some would just give up and be unmotivated because they feel what they learn is way over their ability. 
please remember this feeling as we discuss solutions or suggestions for our students. If we understand their feelings and put ourselves in their shoes, it will be easier for us to find strategies. Okay. All right. Let me um, share, not share uh, my screen. Uh oh. Sorry. Where? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. I have a question. And you will use, we, this is a uh, word cloud, okay? What common challenges do you experience in your classroom regarding students WTC? So I'm just curious, I have this question. You can go to menti.com or use this QR code. Um, try to answer the questions. What kind of challenges do you experience? What kind of challenges um, do you experiencing in your classroom regarding willingness to communicate? Maybe your students don't speak up. Uh, maybe you, your students always being or <laughs> maybe they're not willing to share anything. Any example, you can just share it. And I can share your ideas here. Can you open it okay? Yeah, can you open it? I'll give you a little bit of time so that you can type something. Okay, I'm not seeing anything yet, but okay, cool. Yeah, I'm seeing something. Very good. Okay, while you're sharing your ideas, let me share my ideas <laughs> first. <laughs> okay. All right, so what can we do then with students like that? Um, what can we do? I just wanna share some pedagogical implications that I learned from my research. So, and you can actually share your strategies um, later. To lower anxiety, the class, class should be predictable. Students uh, felt more confident when I provided specific assignments with clear directions to help them prepare what they wanted to present or share. I learned that my students answered my questions much better if I could provide them time to organize their thoughts. For younger students, it will be great if you can design a class into smaller chunks, like 10 to 15 minute block, for example. So first 15 minutes, you will read a story. And in the next 15 minutes, you will teach grammar, following 15 minutes of discussion so that kids can, uh, oh, teacher, my teacher will do this after that. Oh, my teacher will do this. So you can build a routine, right? Uh, when I was in SMB in Korea, I still remember an English teacher randomly picking a student to read aloud. Students felt horror right before the class. Oh, what happens if she picks me this time? So you can explain what will happen in the next class to prepare students. Uh, teachers should implement ways to build positive relationships with students to lower anxiety. This is something that I'm passionate about. Mercer and Dornier argued that building student, teacher-student rapport is essential for students' engagement in language classrooms. What do you know about your students? What do they like? So teachers should prioritize personal check-in time with students. I don't know how many students you have in one class, maybe 20 some, 30 some, 40 some. I remember a teacher when I was in elementary school, maybe I was one of the 54 students in, in that class, right? But my teacher still reached out to me, just asked, 
Like, Une, what did you do yesterday? Like, what do you like? What's your hobby? So I think you can still uh, initiate something even though you have a lot of students. You don't have to do like, uh, I don't know, you can plan, okay, I will ask these questions to five of the, my students today or three of my students today. It will take some time, but you can still do something. Right, I've learned that promoting WTC is more, much more complex than just implementing quick fix strategies. Um, I could hear students' challenges. I could um, hear their struggles. Um, so some, some of my students were experiencing negative emotions like anxiety, low self-esteem. So we should remember that uh, they actually are going through various issues in their lives. So instead of saying, oh, kenapa dia malas ya? Uh, it's like, how come he, he's not like saying anything? Maybe that person is going through like, I don't know, so the parents issues or maybe that uh, student is actually having a hard time personally, right? And provide enough time to engage, I think is important because um, yeah, it was interesting. I could actually re, how to say, like to evaluate my classes, I had to observe my own teaching, teaching videos. And it was quite malu, yeah? I was like, wow. And then I learned that I wasn't actually giving my students enough time to speak up. <laughs> no wonder they were not speaking <laughs> because I was speaking too much. I was saying too much. Um, so I think we need to kind of reevaluate and think, oh, how can I give my students opportunities so that they can practice what I teach, right? And I also witnessed students come alive when they were offered to share their personal experiences and passions. So like maybe my, uh, my, my student loves baseball. So like if I ask him, okay, can you... Uh, share a presentation about your favorite baseball player next time, uh, then that, that student can actually prepare something and share, right? And also let your students know how much they have progressed and celebrate the progress. I told you it is important that their perceived level of English is very important, right? So they need to start to feeling like, oh, actually I've done this much, I've learned this much. Instead of thinking, oh, my English is so terrible. Oh, thank God, Bisa. Like, actually, you can, uh, you, you know some of the names of fruits, or you can um, answer simple answers. So focus on what they can do, right? Okay. How long do you think it will take for students to learn English? Especially in a, in a context where they only get I don't know, like uh, one and a half hour per week or something, or three hours per week to use that language. When students are immersed, which is like if they're in an English speaking country or uh, they go to international schools, they might uh, develop their communication skills in two years or their academic language proficiency in five to seven years. But um, if they're learning English as a foreign language, uh, it might take longer, right? <laughs> I actually learned English for almost 12 years in Korea, but then my English was not really good. When I um, talked to native speaker, uh, my professor asked, how are you, Une? I just froze. I couldn't answer my, I, I couldn't say, I, I'm good. I'm fine, thank you, and you? I couldn't say that, <laughs> right? So. Most of us uh, actually are teaching um, kids English as a foreign language, right? So we need to understand that it will take quite a, uh, quite a long time to master this language. And that means we need to be patient. Maybe some of, them, some of our students are going through this silent period where they don't want to speak up. And that's totally fine. Imagine our, I mean, I have three girls, I have three kids. Uh, when the babies are born, about for two years, I don't know, for two, three years, they will not speak up, but they will understand a lot, right? Moms understand 
what I'm talking about, right? So it's totally fine if they don't want to speak up in the beginning of uh, their language learning, that's totally fine too. So it's your time now. <laughs> um, I actually wanted to do it as a Padlet, but I realized that it was quite complicated. So it's up to you. Please share your strategies to promote students uh, WTC in the classroom. Lowering anxiety, providing enough time to engage, celebrating the progress, building a positive relationship. What are your strategies? You can use the annotation tool to just type your answers on the screen, or you can um, type your answers in the chat. I need to open the chat windows to see. Okay. Let me switch the, I'm sorry, let me switch the screen so that I can, you can have more space. Not really. Sorry, my computer froze. Cannot do anything. <laughs> Can you just uh, type your answers on, in the chat window? Yeah, providing fun games with easy vocabulary. That's very good. Interactive uh, communication as a teacher, lowering anxiety, vocabulary games. Introducing some of the vocabularies to Yep. Yeah, idols, favorite things. But also it's helpful when you ask them to uh, speak up, give them like a vocabulary list that they can use, right? Instead of, can you just share about something? Then you can and like it's quite um, overwhelming. So you can kind of share different. Yes, yeah, scaffolding is uh, very important. Being a lovable teacher. <laughs> yeah, very good. Interesting topic to relate with them. Creative. Yeah, icebreaker is always very good. Try to speak in English. Yeah, modeling. You can show um, your students. So by modeling, that's very important too. I think I don't have a lot of time left. So I let me just move on. I, oh, look at this. Can you see this uh, challenges? These are all the challenges you're facing. Yeah, afraid to make a mistake, comfortable, uncomfortable class, slow learners. Yes, there are slow learners, lack of confidence, yeah, these are the, all the things, challenges we face every day, being quiet. I uh, wanna try, try to teach English, minimum knowledge. Some, sometimes they don't have knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. um, before I finish, I will, let me, I will share this uh, Google Slides with you. And I added some resources you can use. Uh, especially with the young young children. These are all free resources you can use. Um, and thank you so much. Terima kasih banyak dalam waktu singkat. Saya berbagi sesuatu saya dapat dari research saya. Semoga berguna. <laughs> Please let me know if you have any questions. Okay, I'll share so that much. slide with you. Okay, thank you so much, Bu Une. So for the question, we can, if anyone have any question, you can raise your hand and I will choose you for that. 
anyone or maybe you can drop the question in the chat box anyone maybe if um Maybe if there is no question, we can move. If one still have any question, you can type and we can discuss it later after who is me as well. But before we move to our uh, to our uh, next speaker, I would like to summarize what Bu Unis uh, presented before that WTC. There are three word, three keywords for WTC. The first one is lower the anxiety. It's really important, I think, and I will try to implement to my classroom also, and then provide enough time to engage. Yes, of course, for this and celebrate the progress. Thank you so much. And let's move to Ibu Ismi Fajarsi. Have you been here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Okay. Hello, Ibu. Before Hello. Ibu start your presentation, I would like to read your CV. And I'm so amazed with your CV, Ibu. It's really amazing, super inspiring. So everyone, who is me, Fajarsi, is an English teacher in senior high school Wan Kasihan Bantul, Yogyakarta. She has taught there since 2000 and until now. She is also pengajar praktik guru penggerak and facilitator program guru penggerak. And the, the chairman of English teacher organization for senior high school in Bantul Regency. The coordinator of teacher and student exchange, the coordinator of Tirto Debating Society or TDS, and also the chairman of Friendship Forest Chapter Yogyakarta. It is a world class non profit organization that aims to contribute in creating world peace through friendly visit based on composting and still many, many more. This is really, really amazing. Her professional experience is no joke, and we also can learn many things from who is me. Bismi, are you ready to share with us here? Yes. Am I audible, Miss Benny? Yes, you are audible. Okay. Okay. So, so Bismi, the time um, is yours. Okay. Let me. Let's try to share my screen. Is done. I'll still processing. Okay. So, um, well, Ibu dan Bapa. So maybe is Smith's connection is bad. It's okay, Bu Benny. We can try to here? answer question from okay. uh, for Uni. Yeah, there are some question for Uni. Okay, we have some question for Bu Uni, and I will read it from Ibu Dian Octaviana. You talk about the silent period. How long should we wait for STS to student to finally speak up? In a big class where the students are mostly boys, how can we enhance student willingness to speak? Do boys, yeah. Boys will be boys. <laughs> uh, I have girls. <laughs> so the thing is, um, I think I shared about science silent period. Yeah, if I have a chance to in the future, I would like to share more about it. It could usually, if, if they're immersed, it could be uh, six months to one year. Uh, so students don't want to, they are just observing the information. But like you said, if it's a big class, I would totally recommend you to group them in a, uh, how do you say, with friends that they feel comfortable with, right? 
So, and also like trying to, I don't know, boys like games. <laughs> I remember, I remember like, I remember I gave uh, my students uh, an assignment, like share your game strategies with your friends or something like that. So try to learn uh, what they like first and then maybe let them like speak in a small group first because it's overwhelming to um, ask them to present something in a big group. So maybe you can try that first. Hope it's helpful. Okay, thank you so much, Une. Ah, and who is me? Is back. Hello, who is me? Sorry. Is it okay? With me? Yeah. You are out here right now. Okay. Yeah, you can okay. start with me. Okay. Well, uh, uh, so sorry for this uh, inconvenience due to the local connection here. Well, <clears throat> Ibu dan Papa, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for class creatives, especially for Pak Dadang who conducting this great event and inviting me as well now on this opportunity i would like to just share just share what i have been doing so far with my students well i think it's very uh, very simple and practical in my opinions just uh, try to make my students open their mouth because the big problem of my students Maybe it also happens uh, with uh, the students, uh, Bapak Ibu student here, is open their mouth. They, I'm sure they have a uh, main vocabulary on their uh, mind, but they really like uh, hard to open their mouth. When I ask them, what is Selamat Pagi in English? Yes, they can say a good morning. Okay, nice. And then, what is um, uh, apa kabar in English? How are you? Then, how if you practice, you always greet your friend every morning, you meet your desk meet. Just say, uh, good morning, Una. Let's say, oh, I'm fine, it's me. Can you do it now? No, I'm malu. Saya malu. Saya takut salah. Why? So, that's a big problem of my students. Takut salah lah. Kemudian, uh, afraid of uh, judges, gaya, you know, gaya, like uh, sombong or something like that. So, um, well, I just, uh, before I'm going further, I want to, what is it, give uh, my student background for years. This is my student background for years, Ibu and Bapa. They are all about the same. They have a problem. When I ask them, uh, uh, what is your problem actually dealing with your English? You have been learning English more than five years. Or even if you have, uh, if you learn English from elementary school, it means that you learn English at least six years. The problem is only um, more or less about four points uh, about uh, grammar, vocabulary, um, then uh, pronunciation and then uh, lack of motivation. That's all about the same four years. That's the background of my student. And based on that, uh, uh, based on that, uh, what is it? Like just a mini question. And then I, um, that's why I, I have been implementing this to my students also for years. And well, I think it's. Uh, a bit works, though it is not all students then uh, eager or wants to speak up, but at least they they do not feel afraid. They are not afraid. I mean, they are not afraid joining English. They feel happy, or uh, they uh, they they are waiting for me, or they are waiting for English class. So at least they. Um, what they they have motivation to join English. So, what I have, uh, do I think the three <clears throat> the three points that uh, the highlight by Uke actually 
also I do it in my class here <clears throat> first of all what I uh, what I do to my student is try to what is it try to make my student feel comfort by saying that well it is okay if you cannot uh, able to speak English because English is not our own language because English is uh, a foreign language so uh, do not feel uh, what is it uh, afraid if you cannot uh, uh, speak English or if you think that English is difficult but the difficult thing doesn't mean that you cannot do it so actually I just want to make my first make my student feel comfort so if they if they uh, their feeling is okay and they feel also okay to join English then uh, usually uh, they will what is it they will follow or they will uh, see or they will pay attention on what the teacher uh, say but first I have to create uh, the environment that make our students feel comfort by yes motivating them uh, by saying that uh, actually uh, you actually it is okay it is understandable that you uh, have a problem in English and uh, then the next is I'm trying to be a good listener for them because they sometimes have some um, what is it uh, many many requests dealing with uh, with past dealing with um, uh, activities and so on and so forth and yes right I think this uh, three points is about the same with uh, only uh, only strategies only strategy num number two so giving student more chances I'm sure that actually students uh, will not have a uh, willing to communicate because because they they have no chances to express what uh, they have uh, already exists in their mind and then finally after they feel comfort and then after uh, they feel that they are uh, listened and then uh, that they have room and they have space and they have time to express themselves using English then we usually set the rules and the rules um, both rule, um, uh, uh, rule dealing with their uh, position and my position and uh, here is the implementation in my classroom that is for uh, and considering the uh, wait wait and that is considering uh, that is point consider the co non cognitive points and in uh, and regarding the cognitive regarding the English up to now I I'm still sure that by giving students the rules of auxiliary verb it is like uh, the what's it the model the the basic knowledge of English uh, to for, for my students to communicate orally or to use English both oral and English because after uh, based on my experience after uh, two maximum three meetings uh, giving my students about the rule of uh, auxiliary folk then the students uh, and no more explanation about uh, the grammar and my students feel feel confidence they are not feeling afraid to do mistake in uh, using English and here is the implementation in my classroom uh, yes that is what I have uh, do in uh, and how to create uh, my students uh, feeling of comfort let's say well, first I have to steal my student trust they trust to me that yes they are able to uh, speak English and yes they will improve uh, they will improve their English as long as they uh, join every process so that's just the way a simple way uh, 
as, as one of simple way or one of uh, ways to motivate my students uh, to join in English. Even I I say that if uh, if you join English is not if only just because you want to get good mark, I can give you uh, I can give you that uh, that that mark. Uh, you just say you just say uh, what scores you want to uh, have from me. The rest is uh, you just please enjoy the process. And uh, well, in well, good listener, like I say, um, sometimes students students always uh, get many requested when they are asked they are asked to perform their their what is it their uh, task or if they have to perform their uh, turn of uh, doing speech because I also implement to what is it to use five minutes prior to the lesson to do free speech so I provide five minutes before uh, starting the lesson to uh, for, for my student to perform their free speech and the, the speech uh, the students who I mean the order of students who perform their speech uh, is on my students uh, rule and all my students what is it um, apa ya? yeah they, they they manage about the the phrase it who uh, who has to be the first the second and what about the what about the topic of their speech? And well, of of course, um, in um, every chances, I try to minimize myself to dominate uh, to dominate the the activities. I just remember that I have to I have to make my students speak up, and I have to uh, give more spaces and more uh, time for my students to express their um, their English and then another way is uh, yes this is uh, on on what is it on giving my students uh, basic uh, knowledge about English I just uh, I just make my students sure that actually English is about auxiliary form. So I uh, encourage them to do this. Uh, this is what I have. Uh, this is that I, I usually do to my students. Okay. And the, uh, actually, uh, uh, why auxiliary form is important? Yes. Why grammar is important? Yes, because actually this auxiliary verb is uh, to delivering message. And the message in English is actually this just about sudah, sedang, and akan. So in any kinds of uh, communication and any uh, to whom you want to communicate to your teacher, your friend, your dad, your mother, even your darling, the makna, the meaning is only about sedang telah akan. If uh, if the meaning, if you want to deliver without the three meaning, so you just uh, use by uh, simple subject and verb. So that's why I'm trying to convince my students that uh, please do not worry about the grammar, because if you if you need if you know the rule of auxiliary verb. So grammar is is finished. So it, that's it. That's, you can even know. Uh, you can even uh, able to communicate. You can even uh, uh, understand the reading. Uh, you can even uh, create the conversation. Just just make sure. But this is just an example why I put this auxiliary is a very important part of uh, a very important knowledge, a very basic knowledge of English. So. Actually, this this tenses is come from uh, uh, this uh, point, and I just encourage to my student that actually tenses is only 
four. The uh, uh, the vary is about uh, whether it is present and past, and also the variation is on on continuous on the magna sedang and uh, telah and uh, so on and so forth. It just and I think it works. Then my student when they speak when they speak or when they do free speech and then oh I'm wrong. What I mean is sedang melakukan and then they can. They can what is it? They, they can do self correction. Oh, sedang using for a, and then when I use for a, I have to uh, first use to be something like that. Oh, there is no sedang, there is no telah, then I have to use simple present something like that. So uh, this is what I uh, have been not, uh, notified to my students. They uh, what is it? They uh, have been okay with this kinds of. Uh, mistakes, so they have tried to do uh, self correction. I don't know, yeah, and yeah, this is another part of uh, 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 when I explaining yeah. about the auxiliary verb. And yes, yeah, so, so this part of to be, uh, and uh, when to be a plus verb a, maknanya adalah sedang. And then it is uh, followed by verb three. The magna is passive, so this is just uh, what is it? Uh, make the about the students complete understanding about the sentence. That actually the sentence is only about past and present. And uh, if we communicate, we uh, we uh, we uh, use uh, active and passive. So this is have the have one, and this is the the future one. So that's it about the. Uh, grammar and also uh, in the in my title bisa uh, besides uh, creating supportive environment I also uh, usually do like a habituation like uh, Una said uh, they uh, if the student do routine so they will uh, willing to what is it to speak this is uh, the, the habituation that I uh, usually do to my student. This is the free speech uh, prior. I give five minutes to do free speech uh, before uh, we start our lesson. And uh, this is the five step of uh, doing presentation. I want to uh, see uh, if I have a rule that at any time my students uh, wants to start their presentation, they have to start with a uh, greeting mentioning their name, stating what they are doing to do, and then their presentation, and uh, finally ending with saying thank you. Bapak and Ibu, even they just, um, for three months, we have been learning English for year, for year 10, still, there are some students who pronounce wrong when well, my name is Ismi Fajar. Uh, hello, good morning or good afternoon. My name is Ismi Fajar. Say, my student number. Still, they, they still pronounce uh, wrong. So that's why I think it's uh, need uh, for my students to do uh, again and again. My my student, sorry. Then I say, okay, my student number, sorry. And then they do crazy. My student number is like this. And now I want to. Uh, deliver my self description, let's say, of uh, the materials about self description. Then they, they do they do their self description, and then that's all my self description. Thank you. Then, uh, well, I always do these uh, steps because I'm sure that uh, even we we do that, but some of the students still have a problem in. Uh, dealing with this uh, habituation and also I I create some expression used uh, for uh, some daily expression used by uh, the student and this expression created by the students so every classes have different uh, expression and uh, with expression that the the day uh, the students want to practice uh, afari. The students determine whether this expression is uh, the, the next day will be this expression and the student uh, and let's say 
uh, Benny will perform this and the next expression will be this so it depends on the uh, uh, on uh, students so that's why I, in the beginning I I uh, I mentioned set rule and rule so this kinds of habituations like when uh, uh, how uh, how should uh, the students express if let's say during the lesson the, their mobile phone is ring and they have to answer the, the phone uh, uh, and how uh, do they ask their permission or something like that so uh, a different class will uh, have different expression because the students uh, determine the expression and then review here mean reviewing here means uh, if today's today's uh, lesson is about self descriptions so then the next lesson one student or two students do this uh, kinds of performance again just to uh, recalling what they have been uh, doing in the uh, previous lesson beside that to motivate and to make my students willing to speak I usually use this yeah every meeting I uh, like what's uh, share I display a quotation so uh, what we call quotes of the day if if there is no quotations uh, sometimes I play the motivational video and from this quotation on from this video then we can uh, ask the students to respond uh, to what this uh, what is it this uh, quotation or this contents of the motivational video and well it i think so far it can boost my students to communicate or sometime i will ask my students so what will you have for the next uh, meeting do you want to have song for uh, uh, stimulating your motivation or for boosting your motivation or do you want to have a short or very short movie or something like that so students are free to ask or to determine what kinds of um, fun activities for their next meeting so well I think that's um, a, a brief explanation of what I have been doing so far with my students on how I am trying to facilitate my student or I'm trying to boost or I'm even I'm trying to force my students to speak up or how I try to make my student open their mouth because the big problem is opening my students mouth so well I think uh, yeah this is just another some and another example of uh, the uh, the quotation okay i think uh am i still have time ibu benny miss benny okay thank you it's okay, mean the time yeah. is up okay. that's really great okay. presentation for our station yeah, and it's really amazing and i, I also stop. learned many things from your presentation but before thank you so much who is me but before we start our Q and A, uh, I would like to summarize for from Who Is Me's presentation that English is just about auxiliary verb. The tools for communicate in, in English is only auxiliary verb. That means sudah, sedang, and akan. If we master it all, we can uh, encourage our students for communicate in English. Try to always focusing on students' comfort and um, yeah the main point is setting rules and rules thank you so much so everyone if you have any question please drop in the question box or you can raise your hand and i will let you to speak oh but we have got some question over here i would like to answer if it is me do you have a journal article or uh, to publish based on your experience, journal based on your experience. Who is me? Do you have it? 
Unfortunately, I have not. I even have no one. Oh, okay. So, wow. That's okay. That's okay, Bu Ismi. Thank you so much, Bu Ismi. And here we have Bu Ira Puspita. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, can I uh, ask you something, ma'am? Okay, I, uh, I want to ask you about how to get the student motivation, especially to increase their ability in speaking English. Because the first in Indonesia, actually in my region, that is English is a strange language. English, they, uh, uh, they feel that it is something like talking English is something strange and they feel uh, what is same or shy, I mean shy and uh, the others. And so uh, it is very hard to making a community or to uh, practice English because they still uh, think that English still strange language. Okay. How to make the student uh, what is uh, usually to speak English uh, as a daily or as a habit in daily activity. Okay, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bu Ira. Maybe Bu uh, Une can answer it. Oh, that. Can I ask where where are you from? Like, where do you live, Bu Ira? Uh, I'm uh, in Karawang, and Karawang. especially in uh, Karawang is district. Uh, Karawang is the one of the province of West Java, and but especially my region in Cikampek. Okay, but. Cikampek. Yes, and my my school still uh, in the village, still in the village. Okay. okay thank you. And which grade level do you teach? Uh, I now uh, teach uh, ten and eleven senior high school. Ten oh. and eleven class senior high school. Okay, okay. thank you. So grade ten and eleven, um, that's the hardest grade I feel like to teach, <laughs> and to motivate them, it's quite tough. Yeah. So I would actually approach them with some uh, cultural things. Like maybe we can start with what they know about uh, um, English or like what do they, what I encourage my students is that some, some of my students, especially grade nine, 10, they like um, reading anime, Japanese anime or like try to ask them like what they like and try to match their interest with English. And these days, the great thing about, um, I don't know, online is that you can get a lot of YouTube videos and you can get a lot of resources, right? So maybe I will research their interests first and then try to like, you know what? You can actually watch that in English, right? So it's not something, ane. Yeah, of course it's on it. <laughs> For Koreans, English is really hard too. Um, and especially grade 10, 11 students in Korea, they hate English. And they say they have this, uh, they mau muntah kalau mendengar bahasa Inggrisnya. Yeah. <laughs> so I will, I will start like with take little steps. Don't try to overwhelm them with like a lot of hard English content. But maybe you can start with uh, simple sentences or simple words first. When we teach our kids uh, Indonesian or Korean, right? We don't like shower them with uh, difficult academic context, right? So start little, like, can you repeat after me? Hi, hello, how are you? Let's just start like, and then I actually have good resources. Um, I, I will share the link with you. You can find them in the PDF file I will share on the la uh, last page. You can actually explore some resources. There are some resources for uh, teenagers too. And gratis <laughs> law. Okay. okay, thank okay. you, Oni. You yeah. also uh, give me so many inspiring. Thank you. Thank you so thank much, you. Bu Ira. And thank you so much, Bu Oni. And next for the question, let's have who Dilara Siti Maulida. Yes, thank you. Okay. Can you hear me? 
Yes, you are audible. Okay. Okay, I want to ask uh, about how to teach grammar. Is, is it clear? Is it my is my voice clear? So clear. Yes, very good. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I want to ask about how to teach grammar for uh university students because uh I am currently teaching um basic grammar but I found that my students uh, feel bored because it is uh, best always based on book and there is a formulation like a simple present simple past future and so on so I I want to ask about how to teach grammar in a fun way that students understand uh, English English structure thank you Okay, thank you, Bu Siti. Maybe Bu Ismi can help to answer for the question. Well, when I think Una, because the question is how to teach grammar in the university level, right? So I have, uh, I have no experience of this. So if if the question is how to teach grammar in senior high school, so yes, I can answer <laughs> based on my experience. I think Una uh, has the capability to answer the question. Sorry. Okay, thank you, Bu Ismi. Maybe Bu Una can help for answering this. <laughs> well, I learned uh, English grammar when I was in university and it was not fun, <laughs> right? But I think the most important thing about grammar, when you teach one concept, let them use the concept in a sentence. Right, I think that's the most important part. People, a lot of people teach grammar and they don't know how to use it in a sentence. For example, progressive. Okay, we all understand, oh, progressive, actually you can um, be ing, right? So M I N G or something. So they know the form, but then if you ask them to make a sentence using it, Adu, gotcha, yeah. They, like they, they don't know how to do it. So it's what I like is that I usually teach a concept and I let them rewrite sentences. I give them the error, errored sentences, and then uh, they, they can rewrite. And also Nearpod um, and Quill.org. I'll share Quill.org. It's free, and they have a lot of activities you can actually use. You, it's free but you can use the presentations from them. And Nearpod has a lot of presentations with Quill. So you can, um, but teach one concept, let them use it in their speaking or writing so that they can know, oh, Inisalaya, like, especially I think for Indonesians, uh, like Ibu Ismi said, uh, tenses are the most important concept because in Indonesian, you don't use, you don't have like, past perfect or uh, present perfect or past tense. Sudah, okay. But like it's kadang-kadang tercampur, yeah? Like the tenses are campur. So like you need to kind of uh, explicitly teach them uh, different uh, concepts of tenses. I think tenses and then subject verb agreement, they are the most important concepts for uh, Indonesians and Koreans. <laughs> Thank you. Regina. Okay, well, maybe I can add uh, uh, on this explanation. Yes, so that's why in senior high school, in junior and senior high school, grammar is forbidden to teach uh, separately. It must be uh, taught integrated with the text because, well, it's, it must be contextual. We do not, uh, we are forbidden anymore to just, well, now we are going to learn about passive voice. And now we are going to learn about simple present, no. But in the context, uh, uh, when we have a tag, then we, uh, then we, uh, uh, we also uh, learn about the, the unsur grammatica, the linguistic features. So there are three, ling uh, three lingu material. There are only three uh, materials learning English: the social function, the structure, and the linguistic uh, the linguistic features. In this linguistic in this linguistic features, 
one of uh, one of uh, one of the point is learning about the tenses, about the vocabulary, about the sentence connectors. But it uh, it is taught in the integrally in uh, inside the text, not uh, uh, what is it? Not separately. So because if we just if we just uh, teach the content, the student will kata bingung. Oh, what is that? Still tenses again, tenses again, again tenses. So that's why uh, in my uh, slide I just see two or three meetings explanation about uh, auxiliary verb and no more uh, teaching about uh, tenses. Because when the students have already under, have already understood that actually the tenses is only about the, the, the English. Delivering a uh, talking English is about telah, sedang, dan akan. Ketika when, when there is no three uh, makna, then we use subject and verb. So subject verb agreement is very important. After understanding my students about auxiliary verb the next important th uh, important points i have to give uh, i give to my student is about the subject for agreement because there is, that makes the differences between indonesian bahasa indonesia and bahasa english and after that i also uh, what is it encourage my students that english implement uh, what we call concord of agreement something like that so yeah that's uh, because if we teach grammar students uh, that's what's that still grammar so that I think uh, that kinds of what is it about the grammar about the tenses and is contribute uh, much on on what is it on the the effect of the feeling of uh, afraid regarding the students uh, problem of english takut salah karena grammarnya awalnya diajarkan tenses ini lo kita belajar passive voice ini lo uh, simple present tense present progressive tense or something like that so uh, i uh, i ignore or forget about that that's uh, names of tenses. So that's what I have to uh, encourage my students. That English is only about uh, delivering English. It's only about sedang telah akan. That's it. And yes, it works. Okay, thank you so much, who is me. Thank you so much, Bu Siti. And thank you so much, Bu Une, for answering the question. And I think it's time to take a photo group together because in the first session we don't get it so let's take a photo together everyone you can turn on your camera okay let's take a photo together okay Pak Solikin you can turn on your camera Bu Imas Bu Sutias, Bu Richard, Bu Dewi to Amber, come on. Uh, so sorry, I'm driving right now. Okay. Okay. Let's take a picture, everyone. Let's pause. One, two, three. This is the first slide. We still have four slides. Okay. Wait I a minute. I will help Bubeni. I will help to take the picture. So don't okay. worry. Okay, everyone. One, two, three. Thank you. And then the next one. Wait. One, two, three. Thank you very much. Done. Okay. Thank you so much. And Pak Dadan, we have quiz for our session. And I don't join that quiz. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> and I regret it right now. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so the time is about the announcement, everyone. Okay, thank you, Bu Benny and Une and Ibu Ismi. So um, 
insightful and thoughtful yeah your presentation how to develop the student to speak and i do really believe that number one who need to speak is the teacher so <laughs> that's why <laughs> later i think we need to have a special session how to uh, encourage the teacher to speak in class like i mean in, in the proper english and then because the student will follow the teachers when we are like uh talk actively in class and i think the students will will like imitate how we speak as well so ibu bapa uh, today is very special because celebrating the um, world teachers day and as i shared in our whatsapp group we are going to uh, uh, give you five books and then I hope one of the writers uh, is here, Ibu Jesse. So we have Pendidik Asik, and we have Guru Aini, and we have Teach Like uh, Finland. Three books, but then there will be five winners. And then thank you very much for the 60 learning partners from Class Creative who uh, have submitted their reflection. I said it's reflection because it's referring to what you have done and what you want to do for uh, the future. And then so, so uh, interesting to see uh, the reflection from all of the educators and everyone you can check from our instagram all 60 educators i think 59 because one of them uh, didn't want to uh, display the photo and the reflection in the instagram and then we are not trying to find the best but then we are trying to find the uh, what you call it yeah the five uh, reflection who meet with our uh, guideline or criteria of course i want to uh, give like 60 books for 60 uh, participants but then unfortunately we didn't have enough funding for that uh, we only uh, give to the five uh, educators and i will mention the name and if your name uh, it's called you can raise your hand if not it's fine i will share the information in the whatsapp group so congratulations to ibu rina agustina i think from garut and then the second one ibu dian octaviana ibu ratih setiawati ibu emma hidayati and bapa and edi suhendra so once again ibu rina ibu dian ibu ratih Ibu Emma and Ibu uh, and Pak Edi. Congratulations, and then um, uh, the book will be delivered to your house. Thank you, Bu Benny. Okay, thank you so much, Pak Dadan. Congratulations for all the winners and congratulations for all the participants in Class Creative Indonesia. I'm so happy being moderator in this session. Thank you so much, Bu Une. Thank you so much who is me and thank you so much everyone for joining this meeting. See you on the next session. I'm Benny Arum. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you.